So in this video, we're going to look at how to produce calculations for each week of our data. And so we're going to start by calculating an average for each week, a daily average for each week, and then also a total for each week. So as I've set up the data with sales and costs separated to make this super easy. And down at the end of my data set, I've created columns for the week one average, the week two average, the week three average. These are the averages per day for each of the departments. And then also I've set up some totals where we can add up the results. Now to get the average, there is a built-in average function. And to do this, really all we need to do is we need to type this in, or you can find it under the, you can, you can actually look for FX and type in average and it will call up the average function for you. Or you can, there's actually tables of formulas under the formula tab. But if you know what you're looking for, you can just type it in. So average, and then just like before, you don't have to type in the individual cell values. You can just highlight what you need. We need to average the first week of data. And so the first week is the first seven days. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those are seven days. Yep. And then back in our formula, just close the parentheses. Now notice how the syntax works. It takes uh, the starting value colon the ending value because they're all consecutive values. If you have them all over the place, you can also click and then comma and then click and then comma. And then that will collect your values for you. You don't have to divide this by seven because it's already built into the average formula. So this is our average sales per week. Once you set up the first cell, then you just copy it down the column and it will calculate the average for that first week for everybody. Now, again, for the next week, if we want to look for this, the other way you can find the average formula if you've never used it before is click on this FX button. And then typically it's one of the most common ones. So it will come up at the top. You can also type a brief description up here and then it will give you a bunch of options. Don't worry about these other options. You really just want the easiest one, which is just the regular average. But if you click okay at, for after searching for it, it's actually going to give you not only a suggestion, but it's gonna explain more about how the number, how the function works. Now we don't actually want all of these to be averaged together right now. We just want week two. So I'm gonna clear those. And we left off in our previous calculation on the 27th, that was our one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh day. So our new week, and it's kind of in the way, our new week is going to start on the 28th and we will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. And then you just hit okay. And you can see if you go back to the function, it actually shows you right here. It looks exactly like the one did that we calculated over here. It's just the cell references are different. And again, copy it down the column and then uh, the other place you can look for it is under the formula tab. Um, this would be considered a uh, statistical function. So if you go to more functions and select statistical, you can see average is actually going to show up right near the top. These are all in alphabetical order. And if you click on average, it brings you back up to that dialog box we were looking at earlier. And where did we leave off? I think it was the third. So our new cells are gonna be these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, that's seven of them. Click okay. And then you can copy or pay and paste this, or you can just drag it down to the end of the column. Now these are our averages for week one, week two, and week three. So they're daily averages, but within that week. Now, if you want to do the total for the week, then you would do the same thing, but with sum, oops, sum. And then again, we would go highlight our first seven days, which is to here. And then 
highlight the next seven days, starting on the 28th. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Close the parentheses. And then on the last seven days. And it doesn't matter, notice, like which direction you go in. Just the thing is to make sure that you're getting exactly seven days. That's one week. And you're not overlapping any of the values. And then once you have all of those, you can highlight them and drag them down the column. Now, if you have uh, the totals, you can take the totals directly and calculate the averages. Just as an example, if I take my week one total and I divide it by seven, I get exactly the same number here that I got here. So that is another way of calculating the average is uh, calculating the total and then calculating the average. Uh, but you can just use the average function. Once you have all these formulas set up, your cost table should be set up parallel to your sales table. And so now you don't actually have to reconstruct all these formulas again. You can just highlight the whole thing and then copy them right down here. And they will update the references. So notice this is B26 to H26. This one was B15 to H15. They're relative references. And so when you copy that formula set down to the next table, it will automatically re-update the references so that they're still in that same row, but with the corresponding row value. And it will recalculate everything for you. You set up the formula one time basically, and then it will just copy and paste it. If you set up your data tables clearly and cleanly, then these will automatically update and you can copy and paste without having to reconstruct every single time. All right, that's our weekly averages. In the next video, we're gonna talk about the day of the week averages calculations. So these, what is, uh, grocery doing on a typical Monday? What is it doing on a typical Tuesday type calculations?